going to try to do a uh, Nigella Lawson, Delia Smith type uh, video. I'm not. I'm just going to show you something really cool. So if you, be, if you live in the countryside or if you go out in the countryside, at the moment you see this stuff growing, elderflower. There's a lovely smell to it and you can forage that. So just uh, cut bunches of off, off the trees and I'm going to show you how to make a panna cotta, which sounds really complicated, it looks really complicated and will impress your guests or whoever you're cooking it for. So this is going to be an elderflower panna cotta. So the first thing I have to do is add saucepan, sugar, I'll, I'll put all the um, ingredients um, in the captions. Apologies, back again. So we put two bunches of elderflower into the sugar and we're going to heat the sugar. Um, having shaked off, shook off all the bugs, all the little creatures, because the little creatures uh, you're living on these guys uh, when you cut them off the trees. So that's going to go on the heat and then in the meantime I am going to... Blooming gelatin! I, like, I didn't even know what blooming gelatin meant or was until I saw this recipe but it actually is way easier than you think. So this is gelatin that I bought in the shops, put in your average supermarket, and you get two sheets of this and you put it into cold water. Sorry, cold water, I'll, I'll get the hang of this if these cooking videos and all, doing way more sophisticated. But anyway, you plop this into the water and you leave it there while the sugar and the elderflower are um, infusing and melting together. I can't really see if the, the sugar, well, I can't show it to you, I'm no good at the cooking videos, but the sugar is melted in with the elderflower and then I'm adding in the cream, sorry, I should be showing you that. And then we're going to simmer that cream and it's going to get all the lovely um, flavours of the elderflower. So now my um, elderflower and cream have infused together and what I do is, obviously I don't want all of these leaves and potentially creepy crawlies if I didn't get them all um, in my final panna cotta. So I get a sieve, I don't know how to show you this. I get a sieve and I'm going to, uh, what's the word, filter them. Um, so the, the liquid that is left um, has a lovely taste of the elderflower but obviously doesn't have any of the vegetation on that. So now I have a lovely jug full of the creamy elderflower and sweetness. Cold milk into my liquid. And then, this is so cool, I only learned how to do this recently. So this is, remember we, we put the gelatin into the cold water. So this is what the gelatin looks like now. It's a bit more sort of rubbery. You squeeze out, don't worry there's a sink here in front of me. Squeeze out the liquid on the two sheets. And then I plop it into my infused liquid. Squeeze out the next one. Goes in there. And then I leave that to go to room temperature. And when that's at room temperature, I'm gonna uh, whisk in some lovely uh, velvet cloud and then I'm going to leave it to set in the fridge. Now this is room temperature. Let me just show you a bit of it. See, this is like a creamy mixture. And what I do now is I get a pot of beautiful, delicious, all natural live velvet cloud. And I'm going to whisk that into the mixture. So if you want to know where you can get velvet cloud, if you don't know already, there's a whole list of stockists on our website. And also you can buy it online. But anyway, so I put that in there, to work out some way that you can see everything I'm doing. And you just whisk it in. And you're also, the recipe also says vanilla paste. I don't have vanilla paste, so I'm just going to do a few drops of um, vanilla essence. Okay, so that's cooked in. Like it's going to set overnight in the fridge, that's why it's still so runny. And then I'm going to put them into little glass jars. You can put them into whatever you want to um, serve them in. These are actually the jars minus the label of jars. I don't know what you call them, glasses minus the labels of stuff that, uh, of, um, desserts we got at Christmas in one of the supermarkets. So just fill those up and they're going to go into the fridge like that and they're going to set overnight. So I broke my tripod last night putting it away after preparing the panna cotta so now it's going to be really hard to show you how fab it turns out. So there's I've take, just taken this out of the fridge so just overnight in the fridge it's the morning now and you see look totally set. Had I a tripod I'd like to do this and show you but look anyway hold on. Look how jelly like and creamy it is. And now we're going to just get a bit of a fruit coulis and pour it on top. That's going to look really, really good. Get these strawberries now for the coulis and I'm going to put them in a saucepan, heat them up and make a nice sauce and mash it up. Really, um, I don't add any sugar to the saucepan with the strawberries because I just don't have that much of a sweet tooth. So I like the fruit to be quite tart and it goes really nicely with the sweetness then of the panna cotta. So I just strain um, the fruit. Again, really hard to show without the, without the tripod. Tripod, but the fruit's in there and it's, it's straining into um, a jug. And then I'm literally going to pour that on top of this, the panna cotta, and um, serve it. And it's delicious. So look, there you go. And um, the tartness of the fruit goes really well with the sweetness of the panna cotta. And the reason the panna cotta made out of yogurt, because 
panna cottas aren't always made, in fact, not often made out of yogurt, is the yogurt, the kind of tang of the yogurt, the sweetness of the syrup, the lovely fragrance of the elderflower is just a perfect combination. But when you're making panna cotta, like you don't have to top it with fruit, you could um, use nuts, some sort of granola combinations. You do see a lot of panna cottas with different types of fruits on top of them, you know, like passion fruit, or just fresh strawberries, fresh berries on top. Or for people who um, don't, you know, uh, like fruit, you could, you could have it on your own. It's a really, really lovely dessert, and it's kind of impressive uh, if you're uh, entertaining people. Yay, so it does not look lovely. Um, you saw how easy it was to make.